thank you to my sons and to my wife for all the help that you guys are in keeping this stuff managed as we continue to navigate <laughs> navigate uh, quarantine life. I don't know about you, but I'm like super sick of it. I'm just like getting getting to the place where I'm really done with with quarantine. Um, so you might be. <laughs> uh, was it? Maybe that didn't make it on the recording, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> so. For those of you that aren't as um, intimately connected with with my life, with our life, I have been working since the beginning of this year on a complete bathroom remodel for our son's bathroom. Our four boys share one bathroom. It's not exactly a huge bathroom. Um, and it was probably, I don't know, from the 50s or something like that. It was like pink and green and uh, not in great shape, and it was leaking uh, into the ceiling below it, so it had to be done. Um, but anyway, I have been working on this, like I said, since the beginning of the year. I have taken everything out. I removed everything down to the original framing, the original wood, the original masonry, all those things. Uh, and I have been investing basically all my free time, at least that's how it feels, <laughs> into this bathroom remodel project. Evenings, Saturdays, are work on the bathroom time. And so four months have gone by that I'm, you know, working on this as I have time. And I'm now intimately aware of every layer of its construction. Because now we're in the phase of putting things back together. We're starting to finish it now. And I know every aspect of the work that has gone into making it that finished product. A beautiful, hopefully, functional, hopefully, bathroom <laughs> for our four boys to share. Uh, as of right now, it's not finished yet, but we're getting closer every week. So when this bathroom project that I'm describing to you, when it's complete, this is what's going to happen. Our boys are going to go in and out of that bathroom and it's just going to function for them. They're, they're not going to be thinking about all the work and the time and the effort that went into planning it and getting it done. And that, they've helped. They've helped a little bit. I'm getting some, I'm getting some looks from the <laughs> from the crowd here, which is mostly my kids. Um, but do you understand what I'm saying? They will see that thing differently than I will see it when I walk into that finished bathroom. Why? Because I created it. I created it with my hands. I took what, when we were done with demolition, was nothing empty and void and made it into something functional and usable and beautiful, hopefully. But they won't see it that way. They're, they're just going to be like, oh, it's a bathroom. We just use it. It's here. Right? And that's okay. I'm not faulting, I'm not faulting you. <laughs> anyway, the point is, I'm going to remember. I'm going to take time to remember when I go in there. I'm going to remember every detail. I'm going to remember the sacrifice that was made. Uh, you know, how, how I, I put my hands to every piece of that bathroom. Well, to be fair, uh, Brother Evan and the guys at J.G. Grable helped me with the plumbing part of it because I don't really like dealing with plumbing. That's like the one thing that I try not to mess with. Uh, and Brother Beacon helped us a bit with picking out tile and some other things. So I got to give those two shout outs. It wasn't all me, okay? There's a disclaimer that. <laughs> it's not, that's not the point. Anyway, here's the point. 
The point is when you are the creator of a thing, you appreciate that thing so much more than everyone else. It's special for you. It holds great value to you because of all that you've done. And when you have created something, when you have created something, like I look at you know Joe and, and Mel and Nancy and like, when, when you've created like a business, right? That's, that's like your baby. Like it's, it's your thing. And, you know, mothers, like you created this life, like this life was formed inside of you and you gave birth to it. And somehow by the grace of God, you kept it alive after, you know, like in its growing up stages and like, praise the Lord. Anyway, you take time to admire it when you created it. You take time to appreciate it. And you don't just walk away from it. You don't create something and then just walk away and never look at it again or walk away and never think about it again. Right? Do you understand? And here's the thing. God is your creator. God is your creator. And God did not create you to just walk away and never look at you again. God didn't create you to walk away and never think about you again. You are special to him. You hold great value to God because he created you. Not because of what you do or don't do. Not because of who you are or who you're not. Because he created you. It's just that simple. And he wants to walk with you and to talk with you. Now you might hear that this morning and think, or whenever you're watching this, and think, I don't know, I just, I'm not feeling it. Like, I don't believe that God really wants to walk with me and talk with me. But yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. All you have to do is read your Bible to understand this. I say that to my, my boys a lot, and like, read your Bible. <laughs> They ask me a lot of questions and I'm like, well, I could answer it or you could just read it yourself. Go to Genesis chapter one, right, right in the beginning, Genesis chapter one. God wants to walk with you and talk with you. God created you and he wants to be with you. Genesis chapter one, verse 31. God has finished all of his creation in the story of creation. And it says, then God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. That's like me walking into my bathroom when it's finished. Not my bathroom, the boy's bathroom when it's finished. I'm going to look over it and be like, ah, oh, it's good. <laughs> God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. And then look at chapter 3, verse 8. Chapter 3, verse 8. This is right after Adam and Eve sin, And it says, When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. God was coming to, the, to them to have his, his walk and his talk with them. And instead of being excited to meet with God and to walk with God and talk with God, they hid from him. Because they didn't believe that God would want to walk with them and talk with them after all that they had done. Does that feel like you, maybe, today? I don't believe God wants to walk with me and talk with me. I'm a sinful person. I struggle with things, with temptation. I fight fights. I fight battles in my mind. That might be you. I don't believe that God wants to walk with me and talk with me. But check this out. Even after Adam and Eve sin, even after the fall, even after God is forced by them to pronounce his curses on his own creation, on his own creation, he announces the curses that they've brought onto it. Even after that, in chapter 4 of Genesis, we see God still desiring to walk and talk with his creation. Cain and Abel the story of Cain and Abel, you can read Genesis chapter 4 on your own later if you're not familiar with it. But God comes and he walks with them, he talks with them. 
he tells Cain, he asks Cain, why, why are you angry? Why are you so angry? If you just do what's right, you'll be accepted. God wants to walk and talk with his creation because he loves you. He loves you. You are his creation. You're still his creation. Listen, understand this one thing. If you only get one thing out of today, let it be this, that no matter what you do, you are still God's creation and God is still your creator. No matter what you do. And no matter what you've done in the past, God is still your creator and you are still his creation. Did you catch that? No matter what you do, God remains your creator. No matter what exists in your past, God is still your creator and he desires to be with you, to walk with you, to talk with you, to make you more like himself. Amen. Amen. And again, Scripture confirms, declares, go to Psalm 100. Psalm 100, verse 3. No matter what you do, you are still God's creation. No matter what you have done in the past or what has been done to you, you are still God's creation. I cannot state that more emphatically. Psalm 103 says, Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Can we just acknowledge that this morning as the foundation of what we're talking about today? That God is our Creator Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are His. We are, the, we are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Amen. So, God created you, period. You belong to God, period. And God loves you, period. Now check this out. Right When you create something, you don't just walk away and never go back to it, right? Like using going back to, to the bathroom analogy. Even when that bathroom is done, it's not my bathroom. It's actually not, it's going to be like out of my way to go into that space. It's not like part of my route in the house. But I guarantee you, I'm going to go back into that bathroom again and again to be like, okay, yeah, (laughs) it's finished and appreciate it, right? I'm not just, I'm not just going to be like, well, that's done and just forget about it. And God has created you. We've established that God created you. Even if you don't feel like he wants to interact with you and he created you for a purpose, God created you for a purpose. You were not an accident to God. God created you for a purpose and with a purpose. And scripture talks about that. Before I was born, you knew me. Before I was created, you knew me. And you created good works for me to do. God created you to walk with him and talk with him, but also to work, to work with him. Isn't that amazing? God is the creator of all things. He created you and he created you to partner with him in the work that he does. Only God can do what he does and yet he says, come work with me. Follow me. And he has work for you to do. Jesus said, you don't have to look this up, but you can make a note of it and and look it up later if you're not familiar. Jesus said this in John 6, 29 that the work God wants from you is first to believe in the one he has sent. Just to believe. That's the first work that God has for you to do. Once you realize that you are his creation, see a lot of people go through their whole lives not even realizing that God created them. 
or denying it that God created them, fighting against that. Jesus said, the work that God wants from you is first to believe in the one he has sent. And Jesus is himself the one that God has sent. So the, the first and foremost is to understand that God is our creator, is your creator. Then to believe that Jesus is the one that God has sent to us. Then once you believe in Jesus, you move on to your next assignment. Okay, a lot of times we have to start with the most basic things first. And God is saying to us today, do you believe that I created you and that you're special to me and valuable to me? Do you believe that I have work for you to do along with me? Do you believe in the one that I've sent, Jesus, my son? Once you've got those things down, you move on to the next assignment, which is to tell all the rest of God's creation about the one who created them and to teach them to obey Jesus. Jesus gives those clear instructions to his followers in Matthew 28, 19. That's, that's the next level or the next assignment that, that God has for us, the, the work that God has for us to do, to tell all of the rest of his creation these same things. God created you. God loves you. He showed how much he loved you by sending his son, Jesus to die for you before you even knew him, while you were still full of sin. God did this. And to teach those people, to teach them to obey everything that Jesus commanded. So, let's get to work. Let's get to work, friends. Let's get to work. Jesus said, again, Jesus said in Luke eleven twenty three. Luke 11.23, I do not want you to miss this, so I'm going to say it again. Luke 11.23. He said, anyone who isn't with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Those are the words of Jesus, not, not my words. So, if you're not working with Jesus right now, if you're not, I'm sorry, if you're not with Jesus right now, if you can't say yes and amen to those things, that I believe God created me, I believe God loves me, I believe that he showed his love for me by sending his son, Jesus, to die for me. If, if you can't agree with those things right now, this is not to condemn you, but you are opposed to Jesus. There's no, there's no in between. There's no middle ground with Jesus. He's clear. You're either with me or you're opposed to me. And I know that that seems harsh, but again, that's not my judgment on you or anyone else. You are God's creation. And God loves you, and he's proved it. So don't take this as judgment from me. Jesus is saying, you're either with me or you're opposed to me. And if you're not working with Jesus right now, if, if you're hearing this right now and, and you're like, man, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really doing any work with God. Like, I'm, I'm not. I'm not partnering with God in, in the work that he's doing then you need to know that you're actually working against him. If, if your life is in a state of complacency right now, if your walk with God is in a state of complacency right now, and you're like, yeah, I believe it. I believe in God. And I go about my life and I you know, try to be a good person and whatever. No, you're actually working against God when you live like that. That's what Jesus said. Anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Now, I want to be clear because I know that some people could potentially misunderstand that statement and think that Jesus is saying that if you're not working in full-time ministry or you're not, you know, employed by some faith-based organization or a nonprofit, like, right? Some people will go there in their minds. Oh, well, you're saying if I'm not you know, 100% all day, every day in this, 
then I must not be working for Jesus or working with God. But no, <laughs> if that's you, let me be clear, you're wrong. Okay, you're wrong. All you have to do is just look at the people that Jesus called to follow him. Look at the types of people that he called to follow him and you'll understand that Jesus is not saying you have to be in full-time ministry to work with him. Okay? He didn't call, he didn't go to the full-time ministers of his day. He didn't go to the high and mighty ones, the well-respected ones, the powerful ones. He went to the regular folks, the, the people like you and me, the regular ordinary people that the rest of society didn't really expect anything from. Let's be honest, right? <laughs> he went to the people that either society had overlooked or expecting nothing good to come from them. And he showed them how to do the work of the Father. That's what he did. He said, follow me and I'm going to teach you how to be fishers of men. I'm going to teach you how to do this work that God has, has created you to do and wants to partner with you in doing. So God has work for us to do. And my challenge for us today is that we stay focused on that. That God created us. God loves us. And that he has created us to enter into the work that he's doing. Right here, right now. In this time, in this season, in this place, where, right where you're at. And I need you to understand, I need you to understand that I'm speaking this to myself first. When, when I started putting this together, it was for me first. And now I just have the opportunity to share it with the rest of us. So please understand that. And my prayer is, God, I want to be with you and working with you. I want to be with you, Jesus. And I want to be found to be working with you, Jesus. So, a few questions, rhetorical questions for you to ponder and pray about. Where are you investing your time right now? Where are you directing your thoughts right now? Where are you focusing your energy right now? How are you managing the resources that God is bringing to you right now. I'm talking about financial resources. How are, you, how are you managing? Are you being a good manager? And how are you caring for the people around you? What are you doing? What work are you doing to partner in with the, the love and care that God wants to show to his people, his creation? Essentially, that all boils down to this question. Where is the focus of your life right now right now today be honest where is the focus of my life because for real there's so many things to get distracted with right now so many things to get distracted with there's so many things that you could be upset about right now or frustrated like i'm frustrated that you know this thing continues to go on There's so many things to be distracted with. Where is the focus of your life right now? And I want to challenge us. Again, I, this was prepared for me first, and I'm sharing it with you now. Don't allow yourselves to get caught up in blame, the blame game. I'm talking about right now. I don't even want to mention the name of what we're dealing with right now. But don't allow yourselves to get caught up in blame. Shame, accusations, conspiracies, hatred, sin. Do you know that the Bible says that in the last days, the love of many will grow cold? And if you allow yourself to get sucked into all the negative stuff that's going on right now, that will be you. I guarantee it. I can tell you that because I've dealt with it. I'm dealing with it. 
Don't allow it. Where's the, where's the focus of your life? When your primary focus stays fixed on knowing that God is your creator and that your creator wants to walk with you and talk with you and bring you into his work that he's doing, that will help you to keep yourself from being so easily enticed and dragged away by temptations and sin, like James warns us in James 1, 14 through 15. That was a mouthful. Let me say it again. When your primary focus stays fixed on knowing that God is your creator and that your creator wants to walk with you and talk with you and bring you into the work that he's doing, then you will keep yourself from being easily enticed and dragged away by temptation and sin. So in closing, I would like to read from Psalms. And I would like to read it with this intention. That it would help us focus ourselves on our Creator. That it would help us right now, but as we continue forward, to stay focused on our Creator. And not on all the negative that's around us. So you can choose to either read along with me, or you can choose to just close your eyes and let the water of the word wash over you. That's scriptural. I didn't just make that up. (laughs) It says to be washed by the, the washing of the word, the water of the word. So you can choose, but I'm going to be reading from Psalm 111 through Psalm 118. Now, I challenge you, do not check out right now. Don't don't walk away from your TV or your phone right now and be like, oh, he's just going to read scripture. Let me let me go get lunch ready or something. Okay. (laughs) This is probably the most important part of everything that I've said today. Why? Because this is straight out of the word of God. I'm not going to I'm not going to elaborate on it. I'm not going to pontificate on it. I'm just going to read it. It's going to bless you. And that's it. Because that's what we need right now, is to stay focused on our Creator and on His Word to us. Amen? Amen. Psalm 111 through 118. Praise the Lord! I will thank the Lord with all my heart as I meet with His godly people. How amazing are the deeds of the Lord! All who delight in Him should ponder them. Everything he does reveals his glory and majesty. His righteousness never fails. He causes us to remember his wonderful works. How gracious and merciful is our Lord. He gives food to those who fear him. He always remembers his covenant. He has shown his great power to his people by giving them the lands of other nations. All he does is just and good, and all His commandments are trustworthy. They are forever true, to be obeyed faithfully and with integrity. He has paid a full ransom for His people. He has guaranteed His covenant with them forever. What a holy, awe-inspiring name He has. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey His commandments will grow in wisdom. Praise Him forever. Praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying His commands. Their children will be successful everywhere. An entire generation of godly people will be blessed. They themselves will be wealthy and their good deeds will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, compassionate, and righteous. Good comes to those who lend money generously and conduct their business fairly. Such people will not be overcome by evil. Those who are righteous will be long remembered. They do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. They are confident and fearless and they can face their foes triumphantly. They share freely and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. 
They will have influence and honor. The wicked will see this and be infuriated. They will grind their teeth in anger. They will slink away, their hopes thwarted. Praise the Lord. Yes, give praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Everywhere from east to the west, praise the name of the Lord. For the Lord is high above the nations. His glory is higher than the heavens. Who can be compared with the Lord our God who is enthroned on high? He stoops to look down on heaven and on earth. He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He sets them among princes, even the princes of his own people. He gives the childless woman a family, making her a happy mother. Praise the Lord. When the Israelites escaped from Egypt, when the family of Jacob left that foreign land, The land of Judah became God's sanctuary and Israel became his kingdom. The Red Sea saw them coming and hurried out of their way. The water of the Jordan River turned away. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. What's wrong, Red Sea, that made you hurry out of their way? What happened, Jordan River, that you turned away? Why mountains did you skip like rams? Why hills like lambs? Tremble. O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. He turned the rock into a pool of water. Yes, a spring of water flowed out from solid rock. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name goes all the glory for your unfailing love and faithfulness. Why let the nations say, where is your God? Where is their God? Our God is in the heavens and he does as he wishes. Their idols are merely things of silver and gold shaped by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, and eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, and noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, and feet but cannot walk, and throats but cannot make a sound. And those who make idols are just like them, as all who trust in them. O Israel, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. O priests, descendants of Aaron, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. All who fear the Lord, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless the people of Israel and bless the priests, the descendants of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both great and lowly. May the Lord richly bless both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heavens belong to the Lord, but he has given the earth to all humanity. The dead cannot sing praises to the Lord, for they have gone into the silence of the grave. But we can praise the Lord both now and forever. Praise the Lord. I love the Lord because he hears my voice. And my prayer for mercy, because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. Death wrapped its ropes around me. The terrors of the grave overtook me. I saw only trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. How kind is the Lord. How good he is. So merciful, this God of ours. The Lord protects those of childlike faith. I was facing death and he saved me. Let my soul be at rest again. For the Lord has been good to me. He has saved me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. And so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. I believed in you. So I said, I am deeply troubled, Lord. In my anxiety, I cried out to you. These people are all liars. What can I offer the Lord for all he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and praise the Lord's name for saving me. I will keep my promises to the Lord in the presence of all his people. 
The Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. O Lord, I am your servant. Yes, I am your servant born into your household. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the house of the Lord, in the heart of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people of the earth. For he loves us with unfailing love. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Now it's your turn. Let all Israel repeat, His faithful love endures forever. Let Aaron's descendants, the priests, repeat, His faithful love endures forever. Let all who fear the Lord repeat, His faithful love endures forever. Amen. In my distress, I prayed to the Lord and the Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Yes, the Lord is for me. He will help me. I will look in triumph at those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in people. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Though hostile nations surrounded me, I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. Yes, they surrounded and attacked me, but I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. They swarmed around me like bees. They blazed against me like a crackling fire, but I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. My enemies did their best to kill me. But the Lord rescued me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. Songs of joy and victory are sung in the camp of the godly. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. The strong right arm of the Lord is raised in triumph. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. I will not die. Instead, I will live to tell what the Lord has done. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not let me die. Open for me the gates where the righteous enter, and I will go in and thank the Lord. These gates lead to the presence of the Lord, and the godly enter there. I thank you, Lord, for answering my prayer and giving me victory. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Please, Lord, please save us. Please, Lord, please give us success. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God shining upon us. Take the sacrifice and bind it with cords on the altar. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. I give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Amen. 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 So this week, whenever you feel your focus being dragged away by something negative, I want you to go back to these Psalms. Go back to praise. Go back to your Creator and ask what He wants you to focus on instead. Recognize it. Catch it. Catch yourself before you get dragged away and go back to scripture, go back to these Psalms and refocus yourself, refocus your life on your creator and the work that he has for you to do. Ah, amen.
Amen. I love you guys. We love you guys. We can't wait to get back together in person with you. Until that day, know that we love you. If there is anything that you need, please reach out to us. Let us know, or at least reach out to somebody um, that you're connected with here at the church. If you are not connected with us, please email us, contact at livewithpurposechurch.com or dot org. Contact at livewithpurposechurch.org or info at livewithpurposechurch.org. We would love to connect with you. Um, yeah. Blessings to you guys on your day. I'm just going to pray us out real quick. If you're still with us, bless you. Father, bless your people. Thank you for every person that you've created, Lord. Thank you that you created us and that you love us and that you proved your love for us by sending your son Jesus to die for us before we were even created, Lord, before we had a chance to sin or to do anything, Lord. You did it. You did it. And thank you that you have work for us to do. So I bless your people in your name, Lord Jesus, and in your authority, God, that they would go in your authority to do your work as you lead them, Father, as you lead them, Holy Spirit, according to your words, Jesus, that you would help us to do your will, God, not our own, that we would see those negative things and look right past them to stay focused on you, God, knowing that you are in control, that you love us, that you have things for us to do and be focused on that don't involve all the negative stuff, Lord, all the worry and the anxiety and the fear and the cares of this world. You have eternal work for us to do, Lord. Help us to stay focused on that this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a good week. And as always, some of my guys want to say bye as well.